Hello, America. Okay, here's a 27 Mopar. I almost got this in a car. I didn't know anything about it, but uh, anyway, I'm glad I didn't end up getting a 3.5. But you know, uh, I've been reviewing my motor. You know, my videos about oil and things like that, and everybody says, you know, trust the trust the engineers. They know. You know, um, here's the two seven and. In the middle right here right there or right there is a water pump that's driven off the timing chain and when it leaks it dumps it into the oil and that antifreeze dilutes your oil and wrecks your main bearings and your you know rods and whatever rod bearings and so can we really trust I mean really can we trust the engineers when they built motors like this. I mean, what a bunch of crap. And I'm a Mopar nut, don't get me wrong. I love Mopars. You know, watch our uncle on um, his channel, you know, talking about how the third generation Hemi, how they increased the height of the deck, you know, the bottom, they increased the height of the uh, camshaft and in doing so they made it harder to lubricate thus the roller roller um, lifters you know get all screwed up because they don't get the lubrication uh, he's got a video in the last week or so uh, early part of um, October that he actually goes on a motor and shows it because he had such you know retaliation against him and I mean I don't think he's the best mechanic in the world but he knows Mopar you know you know he knows Mopar I mean he you know there's a lot of people that know Mopar but this guy really does and he knows it from the perspective of us the ordinary folks you know that don't have a ton of money that just put a bunch of brand new parts on a vehicle or a motor so um, I don't want to mention his name but if you google him <clears throat> or excuse me you know, uncle, and then something in YouTube, and you'll find him. But he shows the problem graphically right in front of you. Can't ignore it. But can we really trust the engineers when they build a piece of crap motor like this? Do you know how many people had to replace their motor because it's sludged up? I mean, it didn't help that people are slobs and lazy and don't change their oil, you know, 5, 10, 15, whatever. You know, I think the new um, um, the new Castro Edge, the gold container, says you can go 20,000 miles. God help us. And then once a year by Mobile One. Oh, my God. People, there's no oil filter that's going to filter out the soot. Most oil filters are 30 or 40 microns. Most soot is one or two. So therefore, you need a AMS oil bypass filter to take it out. I built one, my 3.5 charger, well, 7. I had one built in because it was easy. But the Panastar is rather hard, and I'm trying to figure out a way to do it. I'm trying to think of an electric water pump or electric oil pump that will pump the oil while I'm driving it and run off electric and just take oil off the pan and filter it down to 2 microns and take all the soot out. I know when my charger, my old one, with the 3.5, when I had that running uh, on the vehicle, um, you couldn't even see the oil. So, wow, it's just like water. Very clear because it took all the soot out. But people, I'm just, you know, let's get back to the subject here. Here's a 2.7. Sort of an outrageous lot of money, but um, people, can you afford to trust Chrysler mechanics? I mean, excuse me, Chrysler um Engineers uh, to tell you what oil to use? I don't think so. When they design shit like this, I mean, I don't think we can trust them. So people, it's, you know, use the oil that you think is right for your location. If it's cold all the time, you know, the first number probably shouldn't be a 10, you know. But let me leave you with this. The Hellcats 
I'll use 0W40. And now even Mercedes-Benz that were using 1060, like I use in some of my cars, um, they went back to 040 for a technical uh, service bulletin for some of their high-performance vehicles because the rod bearings were starting to go bad and main bearings. Because um, it was just too thick and the tolerance and, you know, um, it was too tight and, you know, too many failures. And when a motor gets known for, you know, wrecking the rod bearings, hey, something's wrong here. So even Mercedes, um, which I don't keep up with, by the way, uh, has switched the rolls from 1060 down to um, 0W40. And, you know, most European cars, if you really research it, um, at least 60% use that, you know, 0W40. Um, Mobile One even has a um, Euro oil, which I don't recommend using in mobile parts because it's not uh, MS6395 compliant. But uh, what they sell at the garage is uh, Pennzoil Ultra. Don't be fooled by just the regular Pennzoil. So you need the Ultra Platinum, and um, it's a little more expensive. But um, I run that in the majority of my um, 3.6s. I, I have a, quite a few of them. Plus, I belong to a Mopar club, and there's over 400 Pennastars in there. So, And we're keeping track of mileage and failures of the motors and so we'll know in about 10 years exactly by the time the motor's off the market we'll know exactly how to maintain them but uh, we do live where it's warm all the time it does not freeze so uh, we do run thicker oils and uh, these motors I know they tell you the VVT does not run the thicker oil that's a bunch of crap does it run the same? No does the computer notice? No uh, does it get the same amount of gas mileage? No but I'll tell you, when we do use a thicker oil, people, we're just not seeing any cam failures or any rock arm failures. And um, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it.